Hey guys, today I have swatches of the KB Shimmer Up and Autumn collection for fall 2019. There are three, six, twelve polishes here all together. I will link the website down below because these are available right now and I'll get into the swatches. So the first polish is called Close Minded and this is a white curly base with really fine peach, blue, and purple metallic micro glitters. So this one is pretty sheer on that first coat. Now that's not unheard of for Crellies. There also isn't a ton of glitter on that first coat, but I always say I don't worry too much about glitter coverage until after we've got the first coat down because I want to focus on building up that base color as well. And a pretty good formula on this one also. It does want to pool just a little bit to the sides of the nail if I put too much polish on. So I'm trying to wipe some back into the bottle. So this one does start to build up a bit on that second coat. The base is pretty sheer on this one, so it's definitely going to take three to get the coverage that I like out of a curly. And you can see that glitter is starting to build up once you get the glitters from the first layer and the second layer combined. And you will have a slight texture to this because that is glitter, and they will stick to the nail a bit when you remove it. So looking closely at this white curly base, it does have a slightly pinkish, maybe nude-ish tint to it. It's not super, super white, but this does cover completely in three coats. We do get a good amount of glitter on that third coat as well. So that is three coats of Close Minded. So the next polish is called Up in Autumn, and this is kind of a dusty, fall-ish pink. I feel like there's a better word for this color, but it's not anywhere in my head right now. So this has amazing coverage on that first coat. I do still see a couple of streaks, so it's not completely opaque for me in one, but it looks really good regardless. So I lost a little bit there. My camera stopped recording. I was just saying that the formula on this is really good. It's not thick at all, and for the level of opacity, you would expect it to be a little bit thicker than it is, but it's really smooth. Very good cream polish. So this one covers completely on that second coat. It was really close in one. I just had a couple of streaks that I wanted to cover. It does seem to dry just a little bit darker than it applies. And it does dry a little bit dull as well. So you will want top coat. So that is two coats of Up in Autumn. So the next polish is called Raking It In, and this is a clear-based topper. It has these really cool color-shifting flakies in there. They're almost a little bit transparent, but they have a very strong orange gold green shiftiness to them. And I'm layering this over up in autumn. So that is one coat. You do get a good amount of flakies out here. I think I'm going to swatch this over black on a nail wheel and show you also because I think that it's blending a little bit too much in this color. Good formula though, and those flakies are going to lay relatively flat. They're not like uh, shredded glitter, which can get kind of chunky. So that is one coat of raking it in. So ignore the other swatches that you see on this nail wheel, but that is raking it in over black. The flaky colors stand out much better over black. They didn't look too bad over up in autumn in my photo, but they were definitely not showing up well on camera. So that is what that looks like over a black base. It actually gives me, um, what are those flaky toppers that everybody lost their mind over? And now I can't even think. There was an Essie one. Shine of the Times. Essie, Shine of the Times. It's not exact, but it actually does look pretty close. The next polish is called Spice Things Up, and this is an orange metallic. It has a little bit of shiftiness. It has some pink from some angles and a little bit of a gold flash from some angles as well. So this one is pretty decently opaque on that first coat. It's a little bit sheer, but I was honestly expecting this to be more sheer than it is. And all those colors, those shifting colors, stand out really well in here. You don't have to turn your nail to any kind of crazy angles to see them. And good formula on this as well. So this one does cover completely on two coats, and that second coat does get a bit brighter as well. There are some brush strokes that run through this when it's wet, but those do go away when it dries. And the polish does dry to a dull finish, so you will definitely want top coat. So that is two coats of Spice Things Up. The next polish is called Having a Gourd Time, and this is a swampy, kind of like ugly, pretty green shade with a orange to gold shifting shimmer in there. So this one is pretty nicely opaque on that first coat. I can see through it a little bit, but it's not as sheer as I was expecting. That shimmer stands out really nicely in there, and good formula on this one as well. So this one does cover completely in two coats. 
And you can see it also it does dry a bit dull, so you will want top coat. And that second coat does deepen the color a bit. So that is two coats of having a gourd time. The next polish is called Appley Ever After, and this is a tri thermal. So this is the coldest shade, and then it also shifts from this darker ready brown to, I would say, maybe a warmer ready brown, bordering on orange, and then it also has a really nice green color to it as well, and then there are little tiny fine holographic micro glitters mixed in. So I have photos of the transition for this polish. We'll see if we get lucky and actually see it on camera, but I'm mostly relying on the photos. Thermal polishes don't change well on me. I don't feel like I'm always cold, but apparently I am. Really good formula on this one. It's actually not as sheer as I would have thought for a thermal polish. I feel like those usually run more sheer than this. So this one does cover completely in two coats. And I can't tell if we're getting darker because it's two coats or if they actually started to change a little bit on me. I think they started to change a little bit. This did dry fully matte, which is a pretty normal characteristic of a thermal polish. And the glitter that's in there is very fine, but there will be some texture once it's fully dry. So you will want top coat for that and also to add that shine if you don't like the matte finish. And it actually seems like my fingers got warm enough to show us that second color on that first coat, but you'll see the transition in the photos here. That is two coats of Appley Ever After. The next polish is called Trend Sweater, and this is a almost shimmery, metallic, pinky purple. There's a ton of scattered holographic in there, and at some angles, and I don't think it's going to pick up on camera here, it shifts to like a blue-green shade as well. So this is pretty opaque on that first coat, still a bit sheer, but should easily be a two-coater. Like most of the times I say that, I look up at the viewfinder and it doesn't look nearly as sheer on camera as it does in person. Tons of holographic, like scattered holographic pigment in here though. And really good formula as well. I think there's a fuzz in there somewhere. So this one does cover completely in two coats. It looked a little bit sheer to me on that first coat, but there's so much going on in this that after looking at it really closely, I couldn't see nail line or anything. So you might be able to get away with this with one coat if you really want to. And it does dry a bit dull, so you will want top coat. And the scattered holographic that's in there is very fine, so you don't get any texture from that either. That is two coats of Trend Sweater. The next polish is called Twist and Stout, and this is a really dark brown holographic. So this is very opaque on that first coat, not quite a one coater though, and it's very, very dark. It's one of those polishes that I think could be pretty easily confused for black. Maybe I'm even confusing it for brown. It's very dark. I'm pretty confident it's a very dark brown though. Good formula on this one as well. Oh, got too excited there. So this one does cover completely in two coats. I was looking at it while it was drying and it almost looks a little bit purpley brown to me now, so I can't decide. This does dry a bit dull, so you will want top coat. So that is two coats of Twist and Stout. The next polish is called If You've Got It, Haunt It, and this is a dark blue holographic. So this one is super opaque on that first coat. I will look closely at it once I'm done with all my nails, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to call this a one coater. Really good, almost sh blue shimmer that comes through there as well. And a really good formula also, especially for being so opaque. It's not thick at all. Okay, that is definitely a good, solid one coat polish. So that is one coat of If You've Got It, Haunt It. The next polish is called Vested Interest, and this is a green to blue to purple multi-chrome with a ton of little tiny holographic micro flakes. And this one is a little bit sheer on that first coat. A ton of those flakes in there though. It's looking very green from the angle that I'm applying it at and on the viewfinder, and there's a fuzz. And good formula on this one as well. And those flakies that are in there are going to dry really flat because they are not a glitter, so they're not nearly as heavy or thick as a glitter. So this one does cover completely in two coats. And it's looking, again, only green to me on camera. If I turn my nails this way towards myself and then 
look at them with my eyes instead of with the viewfinder, I get a bit of a teal color. And this did dry dull, so you will want top coat. That is two coats of Vested Interest. The next polish is called All Fired Up, and this is a black jelly base with a bit of a red shimmer and orange to gold to red multi-chrome flakies. This is a thermal polish, so when it's warm, the base turns clear. So the base is a bit sheer in this one because it is a thermal. I was actually really surprised that the other thermal wasn't sheer. And you do get a decent amount of those flakies out on the first coat. Not a ton, though. Pretty good formula on this one. I am having to put a lot of polish back into the bottle. I'm getting way too much on the brush for my nails. And this is going to dry matte because it is a thermal. And this is already changing before my pinky finger is even dry, so apparently I have the body temperature of a real live person today. Okay, so either this hasn't fully transitioned or it doesn't go 100% clear when it's warm. It might just be that slightly smoky gray shade. It is a little bit hard to gauge opacity when you have such a stark difference between the light color or the cold color and the warm color. And it's changing as I go. This isn't usually... <laughs> I'm so used to thermals not changing that I don't even know how to handle this. It looks pretty good here on the second coat, and I know it's going to go clear, so when it's warm, it's never going to be fully opaque. So I think I'll call it on two coats. And again, it does dry dull, so you will want top coat to give that shine, and it's going to smooth those flakies out, but they're really not, they're not like super textured anyway, but it'll give a nice glassy finish. So I'm just, I'm so excited that this is just going like it's supposed to. So that is two coats of All Fired Up. And the last polish is called Free Fallen, and this is a shifty red to gold to slightly green multi-chrome flaky in a reddish jelly base. So it is a jelly base, so this is sheer on that first coat. Really not terrible though. I am getting a decent amount of those flakies out for being just the first coat. And good formula on this one as well. So this one does start to build up on that second coat. It can definitely still see nail line though, so it's not completely opaque. I don't know if you can tell I've got a little flaky that doesn't want to cooperate, so I'm just gonna tap it back against my nail. Oh, I took my finger off camera while I did that. Huh, good job. If they stick out past the end of the nail, it's just as simple as doing one of those to tap them back into place. And you might get a little bit of texture out of these flakes. It won't be bad. They are pretty light and small, but you'll still want top coat. And by small, I mean thin. So this one does cover completely in three coats. And that third coat does make the color just a little bit deeper still. And it does dry just a little bit dull. And I also don't know how I managed to cut that corner on every single coat. So that is three coats of Free Fallen. So I think raking it up is actually going to be my favorite. It was really hard. There are a lot of really good polishes in this collection. I really like this. It used to be that in the past, if a KB Shimmer collection didn't come out and there weren't a ton of Krellies, I was like kind of disappointed in it. But the finishes in this collection, I really, really like. But I really like this topper because it feels like it's a mix of like iridescent flakies and multi-chrome flakies. Like these flakies meet somewhere in the middle and it just looks really nice over a lot of different colors. So that one is my favorite. So that is the KB Shimmer Up in Autumn collection for fall 2019. Again, those are available right now, so I will link the website down below. Hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I will talk to you later. Bye.